Welcome to Tech Fans, a channel dedicated to daily updates on rockets and space industry. You know, your comments and insights have been helping the Tech Fans community become more useful and meaningful. To get the best results for the first orbital flight in May, which is considered to be an important world event, SpaceX has been in a rush to make a big upgrade for its Starship Super Heavy. So, what are these upgrades? Stay tuned to find out! There's been a lot going on in the space industry lately, so let's dive right in this interesting episode. Let's start with Super Heavy, since, in fact, it is in many ways simpler than Starship, yet as complex and unprecedented in others. At 9 meters wide and 69 meters from tip to tail, a single Super Heavy booster, effectively a giant steel tube, should be able to store at least 6 or 7 times as much propellant as Falcon 9, and about 2 to 3 times as much as Falcon Heavy. Engine count and peak thrust are similarly staggering. However, SpaceX's newest Super Heavy prototype, the new booster prototype expands those engine-related capabilities even further. Instead of the 29 Raptor version 1 engines installed on Super Heavy B4, it's designed to support up to 33 Raptor version 2 engines. While the version 2 design significantly simplifies Raptor's design to make it easier to build, install, and operate, it also substantially boosts maximum thrust at least 40% more. And finally, on March 30th, the first Raptor 2 engine was delivered. This means that SpaceX should be able to almost immediately install a few Raptor 2s on Booster 7 as soon as structural testing is complete. Hopefully, that means that static fire testing can start very soon. By the way, huge thanks to Starship Gazer as always for capturing this nice close-up view. Three first Raptor 2 engines arrived inside this truck. Regardless, to accomplish what I've been talking about in the past two minutes, how did SpaceX chief engineer Elon Musk change the design of the booster? At first glance, we can find external conduits that protect wiring and smaller plumbing, a different layout of the pressure vessels, hydraulic power units, and an umbilical panel installed on its aft. Besides that, their thrust structures, giant pucks machined out of steel, have been tweaked to support new Raptor version 2 engines instead of the version 1 and 1.5 engines that have been installed and tested on all Starship and Super Heavy prototypes to date. However, instead of the usual aft barrel section consisting of three 6 foot tall or around 1.82 meter steel rings, this sleeve was made up of four 1.4 meter tall rings, the first time in Starbase history that shorter rings have appeared on any hardware. Beyond its Raptor engines, the two next most substantial modifications made to Super Heavy are arguably a pair of Strake-like aero covers and the addition of large internal header tanks meant to store landing propellant. Especially on the latest prototype, a series of new sharp-edged aero covers was slotted over the top of two new pairs of five composite overwrapped pressure vessels, or COPVs, that run about a third of the way up Booster 7's tanks. It's possible that they will function a bit like Strake's fixed wing-like structures designed to improve aerodynamic stability. In comparison, Super Heavy B4 has four sets of two COPVs spaced evenly around the outside of its engine section. Mr. O created a very informative render of the major updates on B7 COPV array. Huge thanks to him for his hard work. Honestly, B7's apparent aero cover strakes look like a Wish.com version of New Glenn's aft aero surfaces. Finally, SpaceX appears to have upgraded Super Heavy Booster with a full set of internal header tanks, meaning that it should now be able to store all needed landing propellant in separate tanks. That significantly decreases the amount of pressurization gas required and makes it much easier to ensure that Super Heavy's Raptor engines are fed with an uninterrupted flow of propellant during complex in-space and in-atmosphere maneuvers. Following SpaceX's decision to turn Super Heavy's tank vents into maneuvering thrusters, header tanks should also decrease the chances of liquid propellant being accidentally vented while the booster is in microgravity conditions. With these changes, the new Super Heavy will definitely be a game changer. However, for its partner, the upgrades will be even more impressive. First, SpaceX expanded Starship's nose barrel from 4 to 5 rings tall. 
There is a good chance that the extra mass required to stretch a starship around 5.5 meters is minor enough that SpaceX will instead stretch all starship variants. In fact, for variants like NASA's HLS Moon Lander and future Mars-bound starships which depend entirely on refueling to reach their destinations, stretched tanks and more propellant storage could increase the amount of payload they could send to the Moon, Mars, and other high-energy destinations by quite a bit. Next, let's talk about the methane header tank, which was relocated from Starship's common dome to its nose cone. From the start, Starship's oxygen header tank has been located at the very tip of the nose, placed in such an inconvenient location for the sole purpose of shifting Starship's center of gravity forward. Now, the methane header tank will join it in the nose, with the obvious explanation being a need to shift that center of gravity even further forward. It's possible that this change was planned even before SpaceX realized the performance benefits of a stretched nine-engine starship, but it could also be a preemptive modification meant to counteract the added weight of three more Raptor engines and longer tanks. Aside from that, it's clear that SpaceX has outfitted part of its next Starship prototype with a truly unique Starlink satellite dispenser. The nose barrel, the apparent Starlink dispenser is a part of, has also been fitted with heat shield standoffs, ceramic wool insulation, and netting. Most importantly, technicians began installing dinner plate sized heat shield tiles on the barrel section's exterior within the last few days. In other words, it's quite likely that this Starlink dispenser is actually a part of the first orbital flight hardware. That means that it's quite possible that this dispenser is actually meant to deploy Starlink satellites from Starship. According to Elon Musk, Ship 24 and Booster 7's orbital test flight could occur as early as May 2022. So hopefully the FAA will complete the Starship environmental review for Starbase soon. Wow, that's all we have today. Which part impressed you the most? Let us know in the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon so you won't miss any new update from us. Thanks!